Hello, everyone. My guest today is Joe Bromond. He's the chairman and CEO of Opt Intelligence. Since co-founding the company in 2003, he served as a thought leader and expert in the opt-in advertising space. For the company, he served as vice president of online services across media marketing and got started in 1998 as co-founder and president of Coupon Soup a company dedicated to putting coupons for local businesses online. He received a BA in psychology from Boston College. Joe, are you ready to take us to the top? I am so ready, man. I'm All right. Ready. Opt Intelligence, what does the company do and what's the revenue model? Is it a pure play SaaS company? Um, it is a pure play SaaS company um, in the sense that all of our revenue is generated from our, uh, our online platform. Um, we have a one-of-a-kind platform that facilitates, allows advertisers and marketers to take advantage of opt-in advertising. And so just to uh, make that clear, the way we differentiate uh, or, or describe opt-in advertising is the user never leaves the ad but passes their contact information to the market. In a display ad, they click and leave. In an opt-in ad, they click and stick, uh, so to speak. Um, okay. I don't know what that means. So someone who's using you, I, I'm visiting their website. What will I see and what happens? So let's say you're going through a registration process on one of your favorite sites like CNN or you know, New York Times, whatever the case may be. Sure. You're putting in your personal information to that. You're giving it to that site to register. And as part of that process, we serve opt-in ads into that experience such that you, the user, only have to check a box in order to pass that same information you're already putting in to sign up for CNN or New York Times to whichever marketer we may be uh, displaying to you. So Staples or Cheap Flights or whatever the uh, offers may be that we're displaying, um, the user doesn't have to re-enter their information. They simply check a box and complete their registration on CNN or New York. Okay, so I, I have checked out before, I forget what site it was, maybe it was Expedia, but I checked yeah. out and at the end it said something like, it wasn't a travel product, it was something like MeUndies. It was like, Nathan, do you want like a free discount from like MeUndies and it was a checkbox and I clicked it and then clicked submit and I stayed on Expedia. Is that you, you're powering that? That is not us in that particular case. I commend them for using uh, opt-in advertising. That is opt-in advertising. That's exactly, you know, that's, that's how we would describe it. So um, with, a, with a display ad, you need a piece of creative and a link. And with an opt-in ad, you need creative and data transfer instructions and what data points the marketer wants to collect. So that's interesting. completely different paradigms. So CNN, let's say that they wanted to team up with um, Time Magazine. CNN yeah. could basically say, okay, uh, we're going to sign up for Opt Intelligence. Uh, when someone checks out, on, or sorry, when someone registers on CNN with their kind of email address and whatever phone and first name, after the registration, it'll say, hey, do you want a 30% discount on you know, Forbes or Fortune or Time? You know, click this checkbox and submit. When that happens, CNN then passes my email to Time Inc. and Time sends me an email with whatever that discount offer was. That's precisely correct. The only difference is really what, what gets to, to what we do, and that is CNN passes the data to us, and then we pass the data to Time. So we're really the, the facilitator the connector between the consumer and the publisher and the marketer. We make sure that the data is valid and all sorts of good stuff that goes on with it. So that. what would time pay for something like that to, to you and to CNN? Yeah, so with, with our, our revenue, our model, um, and, and so this, this may be an argument that we're not a SaaS platform, I'm not sure these days, but um, is a revenue share one. So. Um, time would pay us, let's say, $2, and we would in turn pay CNN a healthy, um, normally uh, majority share of that. Okay, like you're talking 60% or 90%? Well, I mean, if I'm talking to a publisher, I'd probably say 50 50 and then go up to like 55 or 60 potentially, depending upon who it is. But, but yeah, somewhere around that area. And, and why do they need you here? Why don't they just go broker a deal directly with time? Uh, it's a really good question, um, and it's one that uh, most publishers don't um, believe is necessary, let's say, to use us, and so they attempt to set these advertisements up themselves, 
and they realize the headache that it causes. And especially these days with data, uh, you know, privacy issues and GDPR, which is a new thing in Europe, um, as well as TCPA. And I mean, probably throwing out a lot of acronyms, but there's all sorts of reasons why you have to be careful. And it's a huge pain because every advertiser or most advertisers need data passed a different way. So this guy wants it sent to MailChimp, that one wants it sent to Responses, that one wants it sent to Pronto, um, this one needs it sent to their CRM, Marketo. There's just an infinite number of things that can happen, whereas with display, it's a link. Person clicks, the, you know, the link is a link. You put it in your system, you display it, that's it. Uh, with opt-in, it's just the, the nightmare begins uh, after you close the deal and, mm -hmm. and you're trying to set it up. Um, That's where if, we go. if I want to go to your site and see all of the marketers, the publishers that I could potentially like launch an offer on, wh where can I see that? Like if I know that I'm selling a magazine and I know that the magazine doesn't compete with Forbes, but a lot of people who buy Forbes would also buy my magazine. How do I go figure out if Forbes is listed on you or not? You, you'd, we don't have it on our site, like a complete list. Um, and we usually don't share a complete list, but we, if you give us a call or reach out to us, we can certainly share one. You know, you, Nathan, obviously we would give you whatever you want. Um, well, good. I just put my information in, so I expect to call and we'll figure that out. Oh, you'll, you'll be called, Nathan. <laughs> no, I mean, the reason I ask is because, my gosh, if I could like go instantly see that. So the reason I'm interested in this is I, one of the fastest ways I grew my past companies, I essentially bought churned customers for my higher priced competitors. Yeah. And it was basically a manual version of this. Right. So like if there was somewhere I could go and just say, show me all the business publishers that, you know, are on, you know, opt intelligence and I could quickly do it without having to like schedule a phone call and negotiate a price and go back and forth, man, I could just see this being, you know, a pretty interesting, you know, alternative to Google ads. I think that's exactly right. We do have a self-service platform called lead lead serve. Um, it's at leadserve.us. Um, the, the, you, you still won't be able to see which placements it's going to go on necessarily, um, but you'll be able to create your ad easily and you know, put in a credit card. And I think we don't have a minimum really for how much you can spend. So trying it is super easy. And our goal with any advertiser is um, we pass sub IDs with every single lead. So you tell us which sub IDs you don't want to run on anymore and we cut those tell us which ones you want to buy more on and we will make sure you're getting more of those. That's interesting. It, the reason why, um, frankly, is that advertisers often think they know where things are going to perform best, but they don't. Mm -hmm. So they think site one, you know, or site two sure. wrong and so on. We get around that a lot by, uh, obviously we don't have sites in our network that would offend anybody, but um, we, we get around that by, using sub IDs and, uh, advertisers, you know, how many, how many publishers or marketers do you have on the, using the platform connected? We, uh, publishers, we have a little over 250, 250 and advertisers a little bit, uh, under that at any given time. Um, about a third of which, about a half of which probably are self-service. Okay. And over the past 12 months, uh, how much, you know, give me a general kind of run rate revenue. Um, our revenue over the past 12 months is approximately 10 million. Okay. And then you pay out about 50%. So, you know, kind of gross, you're at five. Yeah. About that approximately. Okay. Again, each, each cut is different, right? Depending on, right. So we're taking, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably closer to 55 on average or around that, but okay. So 5.5 .5 million. Yeah. 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 Um, bootstrap to raise capital. We raised about 300 grand when we started 15 years ago. And oh, that's uh, great. And you yeah. bootstrap sense. Yeah, it's great. We're not as big as we would like to be, but I think that, um, you know, the market's really come a long way in this, in this long period of time. I used to say to people 15 years ago that opt-in was going to be as big as any other advertising type in the next couple of years. It's 15 years later, we're still not seeing that yet. So I've been wrong for a long time. Yeah. But, it works really well. So you launched in, just to be clear, you launched in, you launched in 2003. That's when you raised the 300 grand. That's correct. Yeah. That's great. And how many folks on the team today? Uh, we've got just under 20 people. Okay. 20. And obviously yeah. you're cash flow positive, right? We are indeed. That's, that's wonderful. Um, what's, yeah. what are the growth plans? What's next? 
Uh, we're, we're really focusing on our um, platform as it pertains to enabling larger publishers to offer uh, opt-in on their sites. So typically over the first you know, majority of the company's life, we've gone to individual websites who have a reasonably, you know, reasonable amount of traffic and we create pages for them, pages of offers, they put them up in the registration path. Um, but the, the bigger opportunity is enabling networks to offer opt-in, which nobody, you know, again, we're a one-of-a-kind technology. You literally can't do this efficiently unless you have what we have. So going to... You uh, mean specifically in terms of compliance and things like GDPR? All the- compliance and just the sheer workload that would go into doing this in any sort of manual way. Like... Uh, you know, you, you multiply five placements, which we call where we put the ads, times 10 advertisers. And the workload, if you're doing it manually, just goes out the window. Well, I would say the alternative to this, I mean, like when I'd say I've done this in the past, the alternative is, okay, uh, publisher A has 100,000 people on their email list that have opted in over the past year. You know, yeah. we have about the same amount. Okay, let's do a co-webinar and we're going to sell a thing on the end. I mean, that, that's the alternative. That's a fan, And that's a fantastic way to go. It's the, the limitation there is whatever the limitation ends up being, let's say for your company. You're a very, you know, uh, uh, charming guy who could probably talk his way into... Hey, did we get, did we get that on the recording? Time. Put that on the homepage right now. <laughs> Not everybody, not everybody can probably cut those deals as well as you could, which I think is part of the issue. So you reach a, a limit where, okay, what are we going to do now? So we use SEO, we drive people to the site, we do X, Y, and Z. You know, if I can just pay a dollar, two dollars, and I know that these uh, emails and or phone numbers, physical address, we can collect whatever data the, the advertiser is looking for, is going to result in an ROI of, of you know, two X, then you know, we have advertisers that have been buying with us for 10 plus years, 10. And I'm totally serious. They without fail, without stopping buying them from us. Every so day. over the, over the past, over the past month, how many, I'm curious, how many, how many leads are you processing per month? Uh, it's just under 2 million. Okay. So um, pretty healthy. Leads a month. Yeah. That's great. Any yeah. plans to raise capital right now? Not right now. Um, we're we're working on a pretty. Amb- we we've, we've been over the last two years uh, really working on our APIs um, to allow us to do things you know beyond. So if you look at Twilio, right? Twilio is a platform that allows people to build things um, to do all sorts of cool stuff with within that kind of genre, and we're kind of on the same uh, on the same path. So. I think at the right time we might look at that, but for right now uh, we're going solo. In in any talks to sell the company to anyone else? No, not currently. You, but you're, I mean, it sounds like you're basically 100% holder except the 300, right? Uh, no, I have a, I have a, a couple partners. Um, uh, I own a, you know, a healthy, a healthy chunk. More than 50? No, less than 50. Ah, okay. So you guys are pretty, del- you, you have to get a bunch of people to agree then to do anything. Yeah, but that's not, it's not that hard. I think it's more a matter of we see, you know, we see that this thing can really go and we believe it and we haven't stopped believing it. So it's no one really wants to put on the brakes or do anything else. Uh, We just, we think we can achieve a lot. Yep. All right, Joe, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Oh my God. I I don't read. Okay. Number two, is there a C, kind of under the radar CEO in New York that you really like? Oh, in New York. Uh, no, I don't think he's in New York. Okay, well, just give me an under the radar CEO that you respect and learn from. Under, under the radar. Uh, dang, dude. Do I, I just don't want people saying like Elon Musk every time. So like someone, just someone you respect that's not in the news every day. Uh... Don't make someone up if it doesn't come to your I'm, mind. Dude, I'm like trying to like, that's You a, don't have, you don't like go out to lunch to like with people like once every now and then to like learn or things. I mean, I just don't, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm going to, can that's I, okay. can I, we'll punch, can I give, 
you a list? Gonna, give me, give me these in advance, man. No, I don't want them in advance Sorry. because then people hey, bullshit. Yeah, I, I don't right, want to okay, give people in advance because then people they they, they just. They say what they think is cool versus what's on truly on their head. So we'll move to easier questions now. Yeah. Favorite favorite online tool for building your business? Uh, say, say it again. Favorite online tool for building your business? Um, Goddamn. Just one you use every day. Oh, uh, uh, Jira. Okay, Jira, good. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Five. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Married. Two kids. Two kids. And how old are you? Four and two. Five and two. How old are you? I'm 42. 42. Oh, very good. And uh, last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Oh, fudge, man. That's a good one. Um, I don't know, man. You're making me like I'm tearing up over here. Uh, If I could talk to that guy, I would say never give up believe in your vision and um, you got to get bigger faster. Guys, get bigger faster. Believe in your vision. Joe with Opt Intelligence, they're doing about 10 million bucks top line revenue. They pay 50% out obviously to the publishers right away. So call it five, 5.5 million in terms of uh, run rate. They are profitable, which I love. They only raised about 300 grand. Uh, they've got, you know, call it team size, 15, 25, 30 ish people there in New York City. Uh, again, growing the company, now working on API integrations, making it easier for you to do what's called kind of opt in advertising. Joe, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. Appreciate it, man.